Hey there YouTube, this is Michael with Zenon Tech Tutorials. This week I'm going to be going over the SharePoint Admin Center. Um, so basically when you want to get to the SharePoint Admin Center, um, it's in the same area as all the other admin centers were, whether you're on the new or the old uh, portal. You just click on the admin towards the bottom left and then you have all the links there. Just click on SharePoint and it should bring you right here. Um, so looking at the base URLs here, the michaelazure.sharepoint.com is just the root directory. The slash portal slash hub is basically, you know, the portal for all your um, sites, whether it's team sites or whether you still have a really old SharePoint admin center and you also have public sites. Um, for those who have a fairly new one, public sites went away in January of 14, I believe, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe they went away from here in, in January 14. And now Microsoft recommends um, GoDaddy. I know Wix is also on there for creating your public websites. Um, the search is just the basic search function within SharePoint. And the michaelazure-my.sharepoint.com is the OneDrive for Business. Um, link. Like I said, OneDrive for Business, although a lot of times it's treated as its own separate entity, it is just wrapped into SharePoint. You don't get OneDrive without a SharePoint license. Uh, that being said, uh, the recycle bin, kind of obvious just for deleted sites. Um, I can go ahead and create new sites here and, you know, if you had a SharePoint account for a while ago, or for a while, which I think if I were to log into my other tenant, I could actually show you. I'm, I'm not going to for this video. Um, but this is a private site collection. On the older ones, you also had one that said public site. Um, and if I bring this up here, once it loads, then these are just the basic um, things that I can do as far as um, different options for it, what I want it to be as far as the template, whether I want it to be a team site, blog, developer site, project site, or community site, uh, time zone, who the administrator is, and the server resource quota. So. Um, now, a lot of these here, if I select different sites, then I can delete them. I can go through the properties, owners, sharing, um, the resource quota. I can upgrade the sites, and I can buy storage. Now, I had actually started recording this video before, and I realized something. Um, I'm not going to show you what the buy storage or the upgrade look like, only because I have a credit card attached to this tenant, and it displayed the last four digits of that card. Um, but basically it just brings you to a screen where you can buy more storage or you can pay to upgrade the site. It's, it's pretty self-explanatory when it goes through. I just can't show you could really rather not put the last four digits of my credit card on the internet. So that being said, um, I can't really go over the info path section only because I don't know how to use info path all that well. I do know that basically, um, you can use info path to create interactive forms and things like that that can be integrated into SharePoint. Um, how all of that works, I still am going to look into it myself, maybe do videos down the road on how to do that once I actually learn it. Um, that is something that I do plan on doing. I do have access to some of the info path and some of the different tools and things like that. So there may be something down the road. Um, moving on to user profiles. So this is basically, you know, just like when we were looking at it in the regular admin center or in Skype for business or even the mailbox properties, uh, in exchange. Um, this is based just basic user management strictly within the um, SharePoint Admin Center. Now, why I have 23 user properties, I've got to take a look at that considering this tenant only has one or two users in it, unless it's looking at old users that I've deleted and haven't been purged yet. Um, or, you know, generic service accounts and, or, you know, generic backend service accounts. Um, but that aside, um, it's all pretty basic here. User properties, manage user profiles. Um, I'll just show you what one of these looks like here. Uh, basic user information, um, ID, SID, the Active Directory ID, and a lot of these would actually be integrated if you're doing directory synchronization, they'd be integrated through there. Um, for a uh, uh, phonetic last name, name, um, phonetic display name, work phone department, etc. I'm not going to read through all those. Those are all basic Active Directory attributes that we should all be familiar with by this point. Um, and there's really not too much else to it. It's just basic user settings. And so when we go to the business connectivity services, 
this is um, maybe different on premise services that you have set up um, different different applications, maybe uh, on premise SharePoint things that you want to connect to. Um, connection to the online services, um, you know, whether it's something within 365 or maybe, I don't know, maybe you have something hosted in AWS, Amazon Web Services. Um, maybe you just have something hosted in some third party cloud service, whatever it may be, you can connect to it through there. Um, and the external uh, uh, content types, um, basically just what it says so you can manage the external information that you are connecting to through the um, online services. So we'll go to the term store. Term, um, and if I actually hold my mouse over here, it'll pretty much explain what it is. Um, you know, basically by term, it's 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 talking about your your key search terms, um, and it sort of keeps those search terms logged. Um, so that way, you as an admin, you can go through and kind of see what's being searched for, um, and you can make sure that the correct things are showing up uh, uh, when you are, are searching for them. Maybe, you know, if they're not showing up, you want to change keywords in your documents. So that way, they'll line up with what users are trying to find. Or, you know, maybe just get user awareness out there that says, hey, you know, if you want to search for X on our SharePoint Online Library, you need to use the correct search terms. Whatever it may be. Records management. So this basically, um, I mean, this is all pretty much explained here in the Send to Connections and the um, Connection Settings itself. Um, but basically, this is just to where you can make content available for your users, see what content is being accessed. Um, you can set up new connections, um, set the display name, the URLs for them, and you can go ahead and test them. Um, obviously, with testing the URLs, you also need to make sure that you're doing your DNS records properly to point to the correct URLs. Um, and then, you know, different explanations that you can put when you're running audit logs and things like that that actually explain what different things are. So, when we go to the search administration, this is what I was talking about before, how it kind of relates to the term store. Um, and here's where you can manage the result sources, um, query suggestion settings. Um, this is where you can kind of go over and you can manage um, the libraries based off of what the users are searching for. Um, you can change the different settings within the search center. I'm actually going to open up one of these. Um, and you see now this is... You know, if for whatever reason you want to change, like how I was talking about before on the main site collections page, how the how we have um, the michaelazure.com or slash search uh, you can go ahead and you can change that master URL there. Um, I'm not sure why you would want to, unless you just have different you know different naming conventions, different things that you do internally, so you want to set it like that. Um, and just to, t to take a look at one more, so if we query suggestion settings, I don't know how much is going to be in here considering I don't really use SharePoint on this tenant. Um, but basically, I'm not sure why this is taking more to load, but um, for the, here it is for the search suggestions. So this is basically, um, you know, as users start to type things in based off of what you have uploaded and in the document libraries, it will give them suggestions sort of like, I don't know, um, Google instant search, well, how it, not instant search, but the, the, the Google search suggestion, how it'll um, give you the different suggestions as you're typing things out in Google or Bing or whatever you're using. Um, just like that, uh, you can set the language, um, and then you can set, you know, whether it's always suggesting phrases, never suggest phrases, um, you know, sometimes it, it may just suggest keywords, sometimes it may suggest full phrases, so that's something that you may want to decide to change. Looking at the secure store, this is basically, um, as far, if I go ahead and I do new here, let me show you this.
So this is not, you know, like buying things, but this is um, external uh, secure applications that you're connecting to. Um, target application settings, display name, contact, email address, uh, the different credentials for it. Um, and, you know, maybe, you know, maybe it takes, you know, maybe it's not a, a, a username, maybe it takes a certificate name and a certificate password. Um, so you can sort of set that how you want to. The name itself is generally not going to be masked unless you actually set that to password. Um, the only thing that's going to be masked, that, that even gives you the ability to mask it, I should say, are the passwords themselves, whether it's the certificate or just a normal password target application administrators and by the way i haven't gone through this but basically i can go through and i can browse for the list of admins um or i can go ahead and i can just type something in here admin check names and then see my display name is just admin admin on that account so it goes and it sees okay that name is admin so it automatically Resolves it to the administrator at michaelazure.microsoft.com. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to the apps. And the apps is now where you can actually go and you can buy apps and things like that from the app store. Um, let's just take a look at the app catalog. Hopefully this is just my credit card number. Um, okay, no, this is just for you to actually organize the apps that you're buying. Um so I'm going to go to purchase apps and it should bring us to the app store. Um, so I have pretty much everything I can imagine here on the left hand side here. Um, best apps of the year, business related apps, clocked and calendars, communications, content managers, um, things specifically for CRM, uh, employee interaction forms. I mean, I'm not going to go through each of these individually. I could do a separate video just on this really um but as you can see there's a lot of apps that you can put in here um so you may want to take some time to go through this and these are things you know whether it's for your it staff for your end users uh editors picks just things that you know the the developers thought would be good for you to have um just any any number of apps are in here um or i can just search for an app so that makes that easier too when I move to sharing, so this is basically, um, I see, I've gotten a lot of questions on this from people in relation to especially uh, OneDrive. You can um, configure the individual site settings for OneDrive and for a different thing for sharing, but ultimately these settings override the individual site settings. This is all of SharePoint. So this is set up here. Um, I can simply say, which I think, as many times as, as I've tried to at work and it doesn't work, I believe my job has it set to where I cannot share outside my network, um, just at all. So you can you can try to share outside your network, and it, it'll either give you an error message when you try to do it, or you know just the other person just won't get the link. Um, so this is this would be authenticated external users. Um, you know, basically these are users or domains that use the ad, that you as an admin have allowed to receive content from your SharePoint organization, um, or external links allowing anonymous access links. So then I could share it with a Gmail or a Yahoo or something like that. Um, obviously, this kind of you know, if if you deal with constantly sensitive information that you can't risk getting out to people that you may very well just want to do to not allow external sharing um on the other hand though you know if you have a lot of customer facing things that you um you have to communicate with customers you want to share documents with customers you may want to choose one of the second uh either the second or, or, or the third option really depending on the bulk of your customer base are they using office 365 accounts where they can be authenticated users or are they just regular you know end users using gmail and yahoo accounts where they can't authenticate to 365. so that option really is just going to depend on what kind of business you're running um i'm going to go to settings here and 
this is basically um, this is basically the the final list of, of master settings for SharePoint. Um, you see, for OneDrive, I can give users the the classic or the newer experience, um, and there is you know basically that that sync the uh, sync option where you can go and you can actually um, sync it with a local client. I don't believe I have anything in this. Oh, okay. Well, that'll explain a lot. Um, all right, I never actually set this up. But basically, there is a, and I, I've seen it on, on my other 10, but basically there's a, a little sync option on the top of your library where you can set up the sync with your local computer. Um, this, that's just whether or not you want to show it. Uh, site collection record management, uh, SharePoint list and library experiences. Um, a lot of this is just what kind of interface you want your users to see. Uh, the graphs, the enterprise social collaboration, uh, the streaming and the video service. Um, this is all, I mean, these options kind of speak for themselves as far as what each one does, uh, the information rights management, or the starter site. So that's all I'm really going to do. I can't really go over the configure hybrid um, because I don't have a SharePoint on-prem organization to do hybrid with. Um, basically, you know, that's if you're migrating from SharePoint on from SharePoint on-prem to SharePoint online or vice versa for whatever reason, um, and you want to get it set up to where you know maybe a user logging in on prem can use the search functions on prem and they can find online documents or somebody logging in online can find on prem documents um, i'll probably do a video on sharepoint hybrid um, further down the road um, but that's about it for this video so going forward um i am going to be taking a, a little bit of a break on doing these videos um, i'm not going to clutter or rather go over that in this video though this video is for sharepoint um i may wait until next sunday or i may put up a video in the next couple of days um just and, and i may just sit down and just explain um what i'm going to be doing in the future why i'm taking a break how long i think it's going to be um etc but uh i'll be putting this back with the microsoft office 365 playlist i'll be putting this on uh linkedin as I always do, and I might actually be throwing this up on my Facebook at some point. I may make a separate Facebook page for this. Haven't really decided on that yet. Um, but that's about it for this series for the admin centers. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think. And um, I will be chatting with you guys again in a few days or a week at the moment.